There is not going to be, even in the remotest places of this planet, a nation that will not <coughs> see diversity in its future. If we don't get this right, I truly believe Europe will not remain the Europe we've built. Sooner or later, every society, and this is not linked to the EU, this is not linked to the refugee crisis, this is linked to globalization. Every society is becoming, in some uh, way or form, a diverse society. Hello, this is Paul from TheBetelabs.com. So I recently discovered this highly questionable little speech by Frans Timmermans. So I decided to make a response video to it. So this is the European Parliament. What do they do here? These are hard-working people with very challenging and interesting jobs. They talk about globalization. They try to realize more efficient cooperation with global organizations. They work very hard trying to set up frameworks and systems for an efficient movement of migrants. And they create partnerships with certain countries. So they are implementing a lot of things. But usually before you implement something, you have to ask yourself a few fundamental questions that should be related to the goals that you're trying to reach. And the goals of the EU should be to represent the interests of the European population. So if you're talking about migration and especially about Muslim migration, the following questions must be asked before implementing any policy related to this. For example, have the effects of the presence of Islam in European societies been beneficial to these European societies? Or unbeneficial. Given the fact that values such as equality and safety for women, homosexuals, Jewish people and other groups are important in Europe, is migration of Muslims to Europe beneficial or unbeneficial for the maintenance of this equality and safety? Are on the one hand absorbing Muslim migrants into European societies and on the other hand ensuring the maintenance of these European societies cultures and prosperity perhaps mutually exclusive? And if so, which of the two should be prioritized? I think that given the fact that the EU stands for European Union, it should actually represent European interests. It is not the Middle Eastern Union or the North African Union. It is the European Union. But if you look at what they're actually doing, you might wonder why they call themselves European in the first place. So let's listen again to what Franz Timmermans said and analyze it bit by bit. Diversity is now, in some parts of Europe, seen as a threat. Diversity comes with challenges. But diversity is humanity's destiny. He seems to be pretty convinced of his belief system. So what does he mean by diversity? Europe consists of countries like Spain, Germany, France, Hungary, Italy, the United Kingdom, etc. And these countries are quite different from one another, so Europe already is diverse. So I'd say that what Mr. Timmermans is preaching here already exists. But it is just not the type of diversity that he's talking about. He's talking about mixing European culture with non-Western culture. So whatever you think about what that might look like in theory, he's basically talking about Islam. He's not talking about Chinese culture or about Latin American culture. This is about Islam. Islamization. That's the type of diversity that he's talking about. There is not going to be, even in the remotest places of this planet, a nation that will not <coughs> see diversity in its future. That's where humanity is heading. This is simply not true. We've already seen in the beginning that Mr. Timmermans believes that this is related to globalization. Globalization does not mean that within separate countries the population will become, as he says, diverse. If you look at countries like South Korea and Japan, these are countries that are internationally oriented. These are international players, economically. But the idea that this means that these countries are therefore also multicultural is simply not true. Japan and South Korea are highly monocultural societies. The same is the case for China an incredibly large economy that's increasingly becoming an international player. Again, a very monocultural society. So the idea that globalization and the let's call it diversification of nation states somehow go hand in hand, or that one cannot exist without the other, is simply not true. 
and those politicians trying to sell to their electorates a society that is exclusively composed of people from one culture are trying to portray a future based on a past that never existed. Therefore, that future will never be. So this is where he really disconnects from reality. A past that never existed? What's he talking about? The first thing that came to my mind is the following quote by George Orwell. The most effective way to destroy people is to deny and obliterate their own understanding of their history. Europe will be diverse, like all other parts of the world will be diverse. The only question is, how do we deal with that diversity? And my answer to that is, by ensuring that our values determine how we deal with diversity and not giving up our values to refuse diversity, that will bring us down as a society. By ensuring that our values determine how we deal with diversity and not giving up our values to refuse diversity. And he says this with full confidence. People, this guy has no idea what he's talking about. He is literally saying the opposite of what's true. Standing up for our values means that we refuse this type of diversity. That's why we have to refuse diversity. To ensure that our values are maintained instead of given up. And then he adds, that would bring us down as a society. Really? Standing up for our values would bring us down as a society? It's the opposite. Allowing this type of diversity would bring us down as a society. If we don't get this right, I truly believe Europe will not remain the Europe we've built. Europe will not remain a place of peace and freedom for very long. For this guy to come to grip with reality would require him to completely change his worldview. This is a man who is very powerful in Europe. And he believes that if Europeans do not allow diversity, that the Europe we've built will no longer exist and that Europe will not remain a place of peace and freedom for very long. This makes no sense whatsoever, and it's literally the opposite of what's true. The type of diversity that we're dealing with is actually a threat to making sure that Europe remains a place of peace and freedom. By the way, some people think that this has something to do with race. It doesn't. It's culture, identity, values, a common history, and these are unrelated to race or ethnicity. Even though people with the same culture, identity, values and history often tend to be from the same race because of historical reasons, it still has nothing to do with race in itself. It's always important to emphasize that point. Let's listen to another clip in which this man speaks about diversity. I have another quote. Um, you said in a recent speech, Europe's goal has to be to make sure that the law is never divorced from its sense of humanity. Now, how does that go with statements we've heard from some Eastern European governments uh, who basically said flatly, no Muslims? If people flee because they're persecuted, you're not going to ask them uh, what their religion is or what the color of their skin is. People who flee have a place in Europe. Um, at the same time, I think sometimes uh, a caricature is made of the situation in Central and Eastern Europe. This, these are not xenophobic, racist societies. They are not. They are societies with a different history than ours. They are not used yet to diversity in their society. But sooner or later, every society, and this is not linked to the EU, this is not linked to the refugee crisis, this is linked to globalization. Every society is becoming, in some uh, way or form, a diverse society. And we better get used to that and we prepare our population for that. You probably heard the emphasis that he put on the word yet. Central and Eastern European countries are not used to diversity in their society yet. So even though this diversity is proven to be a disaster in Western and Northern Europe, he is still determined that the Central and Eastern European countries should also become diverse. This is actually quite typical for people who have become blinded by ideology. When it turns out that their ideology does not lead to a beneficial outcome, they are unable to recognize this as feedback and to reevaluate 
their worldview based on this feedback. Hey, maybe I was wrong, maybe diversity isn't that great. And the inability to recognize consequences and take this as feedback is a very typical thing for leftists and people who support multiculturalism. This man is a dangerous lunatic. A dangerous lunatic with power. You can basically think of him as a radicalized globalist. The solution to every problem is more globalization and he believes that globalization has something to do with turning every monocultural society into a multicultural society. Making a country more diverse has nothing to do with globalization and it has nothing to do with representing the interests of the people who live in that country. Even if you would consider the European Union to be one country for a moment, then I still don't see how making this country more diverse has anything to do with representing the interests of the people in that country. It doesn't. And who is this man to say to Poland, for example, that they should allow Muslims into their society? Even though the original intention of more European cooperation was a very good one, the EU has somehow gotten hijacked by ideologues who I think are actually dangerous people. It is not just Mr. Timmermans, it's the entire elite within the EU. These people are not only damaging the European nation states and taking the right to self-determination away from these nation states, they are also bringing the population of these nation states in danger. They are bringing very normal everyday people who have been living in Europe for centuries if not millennia in danger. They are facilitating the Islamization of the entire continent. And they're so ideologically blinded that they don't even realize that they're destroying the continent that they're actually supposed to be representing and protecting. And if anybody disagrees with them, they just use the word populist. And that's the end of the discussion. They're unable to engage in free thinking and reason and to reevaluate their worldview based on an open dialogue and real feedback. And this is actually very non-European in itself. Wasn't Europe also the birthplace of free thinking and reason? Again, the EU isn't European. I am convinced that these so-called populists are actually on the right side of history. I find one of these populists to be exceptionally outstanding. If this man could somehow become the president of the European Commission, I would fully support the EU. Since our last Congress in Madrid, it has become evident that the language of liberal political correctness is even unable to identify and to understand the true dangers of migration. We Central Europeans expect that if things go on like this, there will be a dominant Muslim presence in the western half of Europe, even in the lifetime of our generation. I understand that the left is putting us under ideological pressure for the West to feel guilty for the Crusades and colonialism, but this leftist policy is intellectually disarming Europe against the invasion of the Muslim migration. We Central Europeans want completely reform our migration policy. Borders must be taken under full control. Don't believe anyone who says that this is impossible. We Hungarians are protecting the borders of the European Union over hundreds of kilometers without any major contribution from the EU, in fact, but suffering from the backfire of Brussels. So on the left, we have radicalized globalist Franz Timmermans. And on the right we have Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban. Franz Timmermans is on the wrong side of history and Viktor Orban is on the right side of history. If the EU cannot be reformed so that more people like Viktor Orban can get into power and less people like Franz Timmermans, it would be better for Europe and Europeans if the EU would fall as soon as possible. So that dangerous lunatics like Franz Timmermans can't do any more damage than that they've already done. This is Paul Nielsen from TheBateTheLeft.com. Never stop debating the left on Islam and take care.